Yo! Hold on, hold on. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome to another Raider Nation Unlimited, man. I'm your man, John Gruden, man. Got a lot of information, man. Start off the show right, man. Shout out to everybody in the chat, man. Little hug D's, man. Alpocalypse, James Bowles, man, Graham Cam, man. Hey, man, it's going to be a splendiferous occasion, man. Hey, it's, hey, everybody on Twitter, man, share this out. We got over 100 in the room. Get wasted with your brother wasted, man. And here he goes, man. Waste is going to go get his coffee, man. Let me tell you guys something, man. <laughs> it's going to be a fucking splendiferous show today, man. <laughs> You guys have a you guys have a great day, man. I might pop back in later, man. Damn it! God damn it! Damn it, everybody! All right, we're back. We're back, everybody. We are back. You tell a friend to tell a friend, everybody. All right, so having some green screen issues here. The bookshelves are showing. All right, here we go. What's going on, everybody? What is going on, everybody? So, guys, listen. There's been a lot going on in Red Nation. I've been kind of like laying low, letting the information build up. But listen, we got to get into full swing, full draft season. There is a lot going on. Now, I don't know if you guys have heard. Mm. Shout out to Mrs. Wasted Talent. Came and brought her brother some coffee. Yeah, I know I got to spit my gum out, Martin. But put in some toilet tissue and the gum is gone. Now, Jaden Daniels, the rumors out of the Colin Cowherd camp from the herd, FS1 on Monday, is uh, Cowherd revealed that a source close to him that Jaden Daniels is the favorite to go to the Washington Redskins and or the Washington Commanders. You guys know I'm old. Don't shoot me. But the Washington Commanders, so they have a second pick in the draft, guys. Now, this is what I've been talking about the whole time. <laughs> the Chicago Bears are not willing to play ball. They're getting Caleb Williams. And for what I'm hearing from this report, and I, this is not the first time I've heard this. Colin Cowherd was the first person to put his name on it, but I've heard this for the last few weeks. And this is the reason why I've been so heavy on the Michael Penix Jr. train. I'm going to try to stay off of that because we've been talking about that too much lately. But... I'm going to be real with you. This is the reason why this, the Redskins are looking at God, my God. It's like the worst show ever already. What am I doing? I keep calling them the Redskins. But the commanders are in a situation now where they have circled Jaden Daniels as their guy. So he's gone at number two. So now you have to start readjusting your expectations as a, as a fan. because. If the Redskins, the commanders zero in on him. <laughs> Yo, listen, guys, don't get mad at me. They're the Redskins. I don't give a damn. I'm calling them the Redskins. The F out of here with that. But if they're zeroed in on him at number two, now the draft and our expectations are completely different. It's completely different at that point. Because if they're zeroed in the way the Chicago Bears are zeroed in on Caleb Williams, you couldn't give them five first-round picks to get Jaden Daniels, and you wouldn't want to. So now where does that leave us? Now it leaves us with three guys left. Drake May. Some people think he might fall a little bit. J.J. McCarthy and Michael Penix Jr. And I'm going to tell you guys something. The Bo Nix trope in the first round, I don't see Bo Nix going in the first round. I see Bo Nix going in the second round. I definitely do. Bo Nix just doesn't have the physical ability to, to kind of sit next to the rest of these other quarterbacks. He doesn't. He He's battle-tested. He's played a lot of games. So now the Raiders have to start recalibrating 
what they're going to do. Our fan base, which is you. We need to start recalibrating what we're thinking here. How are we going to go about this, man? How are we going to go about this? Like, what, what do you guys think? What are you guys thinking? Now it doesn't seem like a reach to either move up or to take a guy at 13, a quarterback. man. Because I'm telling you, that quarterback market is at a premium, everybody. Shout out to everybody in the chat. Yo, shout out to my brother, Graphic Raiders, in the place, man. Shout out to my brother, man. Said, we beat the Redskins in the Super Bowl in 83. They will forever be that. That's a fact, bro. That is a fact. And, and 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 graphic, you you're absolutely you're right. It, it, yo, you can have a team that might move back in and grab them, but for me, from what I see from Bo Nix, but I got a second round grade on Bo Nix. I like Bo Nix. If I take him in the second round, I'm okay with it. I'm not okay with taking him in the first round. No. I'm not okay with that. To me, he's a second round pick. It's my personal opinion. And slap nuts, you you could be. Absolutely right, yo. He he got the picture of Mike Florio. Shout out to the great and powerful Slap Nuts. Is this hug D's? God, wow! He not the picture of the ventriloquist dummy himself, Mike Florio, yo. <laughs> Y'all look crazy, man. Y'all look crazy. Those teams that are missing out early will trade up. And, yo, listen, that's a fact. But I'm telling you right now, yo, do not be surprised if he falls out of the first round. Because the market dictates that there's a bigger positional value for other guys in this draft. You have guys in this draft, man, like the, the Malik neighbors of the world. You got guys that are all world off the chart talents, man. And some of these teams that are kind of in between their quarterback situations, those will be the teams that you will red circle for Knicks. Now, a lot of us have had Knicks going to Denver. Now, that is just an educated guess. There are a lot of people who have kind of followed suit with that school of thought. You've, you've heard that right here from myself and Graphic Raider. We, 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 we both have said that, you know, if, if anybody would be a quarterback that Sean Payton would take, it would be Bo Nix because Bo Nix doesn't have the big arm. He's pretty accurate, all of that kind of stuff. But listen, there have not really been any real, real breadcrumbs there. Now, I saw last week the Denver Broncos had Michael Penix Jr. in for a top 30 visit. I did not see them bringing in Bo Nix. I didn't see that. Now, that doesn't really necessarily mean anything. But there were a lot of teams that the Sharks are swimming around Penix Jr., man. And, guys, today I want to break down, too, there was a lot of scout grades that were released by Bleacher Report. It's very, very interesting the way that they view some of these prospects. But, yo, we're going to go full draft. We're going to get some of the news and rumors out of the way, and we're going to go full draft. That's what we're doing for the, for the next week, man, because that's where my mindset is. <laughs> Grass said, "Ways to get drunk, drunk at Detroit. Y'all stay tuned. It never happened. Never happened. There's no angry dads around. <laughs> I'll be rocking and rolling. We got 408 in the room. Get waste with your brother. Wasted. My God, Demarcus Webb. Wasted. So if Daniels and Penix are gone, would you go right tackle a cornerback in the first, and Knicks in the second if available? Now, see, it all depends on whether I'm going to go quarterback." Now, to, to be honest with you, we went kind of high last year and we got Jacorian Bennett. I would like to see Jacorian Bennett, you know, develop. I really do. And 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 with Jack Jones, Jack Jones is a guy that, you know, we're going to get into the Jack Jones stuff because I didn't get a chance to get my piece on that. I, I feel like at cornerback, we're not as barren as we are at right tackle. I think right tackle is a a, a, a must. It's a must because even if you 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 subscribe to the school of thought of Thayer Mumford being your right tackle, you still need a guard and you still need depth there. You know you have a lot of unproven pieces there. You know you have you know guys are talking about Dalton Wagner. It's a guy we haven't seen take a snap in the NFL yet. So yeah, I, I would definitely go right tackle. Shout out to my brother Demarcus Webb, man, for, with the, with the dope ass comment. My brother Demox is in a place to be with the five dollar holler. Shout out to Demox. How about them Oilers wasted? What you think they going to do? F you, Demokes. 
F you. That's right. The Titans are still the Oilers, damn it. Should have, man, they should have never moved it. Man, let me tell you something. Besides the Raiders, the Oilers had the second best uniform in the league, man, back in the day. Shout out to the, the, the Warren Moon and, and, and um, Haywood Jeffries and Ernest Givens and Lorenzo White and the Seven Dwarves. Shout out to the old Oilers, man. That was an exciting football team to, to watch, man. The House of Pain. Houston National Door. I remember that, man. Shout out to them, man. Let me get it going here, man. <laughs> My guy, what nation? The Baltimore Colts making some moves. You damn right. You were damn right. But yeah, guys, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to be honest with you, man. The Raiders' offensive line is definitely, definitely job one in this draft after quarterback. because. Even if you don't get your guy this year, it serves the rest of the team and the guys that we have under center now to have a really stout offensive line. If you can address that offensive line, you've addressed the defensive line in a real way, right? That's a strength of the football team. You address the offensive line and make that a strength. Now you've you've essentially built the team inside and you can just move out and now you're just adding at this point. The reason why the 49ers are such a dynamic football team is that They've addressed up front on both sides, both lines, in a real way for a long time. The Philadelphia Eagles, the same thing, in a real way for a long time. I want the Raiders to be in that same vein of people. I want the Raiders to be able to just, you know, like out of Eagles. The Eagles lost Kelsey's brother, Jason Kelsey, right? He's one of the best centers in the league. Probably going to go right to the Hall of Fame, right? He's a walk in the Hall of Fame. And they have a kid there ready to start that's probably going to give you the same level of production. That is the situation I want our Raiders in, man. Shout out to the chat, man. Shout out to the chat. My God, Dan High Stakes Teaser, get off my lawn gang is in a place. Clint Westwood is in the effing place. Oh, my God, man. Redbone is in a place. It might be a burn season for AOC, just saying. Wouldn't be a surprise if we can't get a QB. I wouldn't be surprised either. Because the thing that Tom, if Tom Telesco has shown you nothing is he is a guy who is not willing to overpay, overspend, or or, or make an, a move based off of emotion and pressure. He's, a, he's the kind of guy that walks down the hill. He goes, he walks through the aisles of the supermarket of players two, three times before he makes his, his, his decision. I love that level of GM. I don't like when you 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 know you have to acquiesce to a coach because coaches are too close to the forest to see the trees a lot of the times. They're so emotional. They're, they're the ones who are moving and shaping the roster on a daily basis, right? It's good to have that separation because I believe if Antonio, if, if Antonio Pierce had final cut, we'd be trading four or five first rounders to move up to two to draft Jaden Daniels. Now, I know a lot of people say, hey, man, AP can't mess around. We want him to be successful. We want him to keep this job. We all want him to be successful. But look, if, if, if we're being real, right, we have a situation where the Raiders can sneak into the playoffs. Even if, they, if, if, they're, if they're not horrendous and they're like, you know, 9 and 8, 10 and 7, that that will fly with the nation. It's not like we've had a whole if, if if we could see positive gains and growth this year and we can really build up the rest of this roster. Look, then next year, quarterback's job one. Then you trade the world away to get the quarterback. But this year, it is about building, getting your cornerstone pieces under contract. Where we have a lot of those guys that are under contract. You got other guys that you're trying to determine whether or not. They are cornerstone pieces, right? Guys such as the next gentleman we're about to talk about, Jack Jones. So did anybody see the, the Jack Jones interview on um <laughs> on Instagram, man? It looks like he was on vacation. And he was talking his shit about the Patriots, man. And, and I see a lot of people, man. I saw a lot of people. They were talking about Jack Jones yesterday. A lot of people was upset. A lot of people were saying that, you know, oh, man. 
he's having a meltdown and all of this other nonsense. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be honest with you, bro. I, I believe that there's been like this, this. I think with Belichick leaving the, the Patriots, it's like the Berlin Wall was torn down. You know what I'm saying? And he was talking his shit. And it's a long time coming. It is a long time coming, bro. And I have no problem with what he said. This was not a Damon Arnett situation. This is not a situation where he said something out of the way or crazy. He wasn't incoherent. It's just that the way he delivered his message makes some of you uncomfortable. And I'm going to be honest with you. That's your problem. If you're uncomfortable with that interview, that's on you. You don't like his vernacular. You don't like how he was talking. Well, guess what? Man, he's from the crib, right? That's how he talked. Some people can code switch and speak the Queen's English, such as myself, right? And other people don't want to, and he shouldn't have to. So if you were uncomfortable with that, that's a you problem. I love what he said. I love that he got it off his chest. I love that he's all in on the Raiders. And you know I'm glad he went through that with the Patriots and their media and how grimy they are because it makes him appreciate our fan base and this team and this city more. And I feel like you're going to get the best of Jack Jones this season, man. Tell you right now, man. My guy hugged these. Jack didn't say anything detrimental. And he's still super young. He gave props to Belichick, just said that the Raiders are a better fit for him. And, bro, listen, that that is like saying water's wet right now. You can clearly see that the Raiders are a better fit for his personality. He's all Raider, that kid. And and I'm just – I'm glad that the Raiders have broken away. I'm glad that Mark understands that this is a special case. We can't – there's certain things that we can do as an organization that – other teams do that are smart to do, right? Like there are just certain things that years ago that weren't done that are done now in, in all facets of life where people are like, listen, you know, this is, you know, I'm going to give you an example, right? Like when you work out nowadays, right? You know, intermittent fasting is just something that everyone did before, but now it is something that's kind of mandatory if you want to cut, you want to shred, right? There are certain things in, 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 in like not paying running backs and, you know, things like that, having certain organizational structures, things that are kind of boilerplate across the NFL. I want the Raiders to get into that, but I don't want the Raiders to be this homogenized version of an organization. That is not who we are. It's not who we are. You know what I'm saying? We are the guys that we are now. We the swashbuckling renegades. That is who the Raiders are, and I'm glad that Jack Jones is here. I'm glad that this organization is allowing him to be himself because no less than a year ago, we were in search of something that was very, very different. And I was, and listen, I was here, look, full disclosure, I was here to see if the Patriot way worked outside of New England. They've had so much success. They've had the most success of any team in the last 20 years. So I was willing to take a flyer on that. But once I saw it was an abject failure, and it was a square peg going into a round hole. It was time to move on. And 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 let's hope that this Raider way is the way that gets us to the promised land. Let's hope that this new this new free willing, free spirited team doesn't take their eye off the ball and they stay disciplined and you and everybody plays like Max. Shout out to everybody in the chat. We got over five hundred in the room. Get wasted with your brother. Wasted. Tell a friend to tell a friend. My God, Chuck. High stakes design tailor. It's indicative of what Mark Davis has learned about building his own championship teams. WNBA. I mean, look, Chuck, you can say that. You you could say that, but but I, I, I think that it's 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 like comparing apples to oranges, right? Basketball is a sport where if you if you pay the best player on the court or the best two or three players on the court, most likely you're gonna win, right? In women's basketball, the money and the, the, the salary cap, just different. He had an expansion team. They they you know they got it right. It's a lot harder to win in the National Football League, my brother. 
So I don't think that some of the things that he he's learned with the WNBA really applies to the Raiders. I really don't. I'll be honest with you. Salute, Hammer. What it is, Hammer? Oh, about Jack. He ain't hating on anyone. He just calling it what it was. And if you're offended, um, but if you're offended, then wear that shoe. He ain't telling you how to express yourself. Jack, a real one. And I fuck with it. I fuck with it. And I love, I love what I'm seeing from this team. The only thing is, and I, and I will say this, right? I just hope that that was his magnum opus. I hope that that was his last time addressing the Patriots. I hope that he leaves this shit in the past. That's what I'm hoping, man. Salute. My guy Hammer's in a place. The great and powerful Hammer is back in a place to be. He just did a live today. It was splendiferous. You know? Listen, man, it is time for everybody to get grinding, man. It is draft season, everybody. Draft season. Now, guys, <laughs> Daniel Malero, the Berlin Wall, Wasted was there. <laughs> Daniel Malero, listen, I told you, man, Wasted is old as Methuselah. I was there at the building of the pyramids, and I was there when the wall was being brought down, man. I'm telling you now, man, I handcuffed lightning. And put thunder in jail. <laughs> but yeah, nah, and, and and that's a fact. He was talking shit to the fans, talking shit to him. And see, you know the thing about the Boston sports media and the New York sports media? It's markedly different than our sports media. We are a ravenous fan base, right? But we're a respectful fan base. We're a loving fan base. We're a forgiving fan base. I think a lot of people don't realize. We think that we're so crazy and stuff like that. But we're crazy against other fans that are against the Raiders. We are We are the most... I Look, and I'm not just saying this because I'm a Raider fan. I'm being real with you. We are the most loyal fan base there is. Because this organization hasn't given us a whole lot to cheer about in the last 30 years. They really haven't. Look, you know what? I'm going to go back 20 years because we was in the Super Bowl 20 years ago, right? The last 20 years, they haven't given us a whole lot to cheer about, and we're still here. We're still just as hungry for, 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 for Raider football. You guys are in here deep right now. There are almost 600 people in here, and just because the pulse of the name, we just want to hear something, and I'm here to bring it to you, right? But this, this you don't see this level of, 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 of focus from a fan base, bro. You just don't see it. It is something special. And you guys got to understand something. We as a fan base need to learn how to walk the line between being loyal and being foolish. And what I'm saying is, is that going forward, right, you have to look at everything. And I'm not telling you guys how to be a fan, but maybe I am. You got to look at everything from a bird's eye view and then get down to a worm's eye view. Now, the Jaden Daniels thing, you guys like how I did that, come right back around to you. The Jaden Daniels situation is something that we heard AP wants him. We watched him on film. We, what we see is electric. We see him in the locker room. We get our hopes up. And it's it, now it's looking like it might be a pipe dream. So I need for you guys to wrap your mind about who's next. And accepting that. That's what I'm going to ask of you guys. I don't ask a whole lot of you. But I need you guys to use the left side of your brain and process what you see. Process what you see. And don't accept anything less than excellence, right? So we do not get a, a Penix, right? We don't get Jaden Daniels. Now you move on and you draft. Now, if, if McCarthy's available, you might want to take a flyer on McCarthy. If Drake May is available, maybe. Now, these are the things. I was watching some Drake May tape. I'm not a big Drake May guy. But what I will say about Drake May is Drake May can make all the throws. He is the most pro-ready prospect as far as from a height, weight, speed kind of perspective, arm strength, arm talent, you know, all of that. He is one of the most pro-ready prospects in this entire draft. Problem with Drake May is, is that when the money was on the table and he had to make those throws, he had to win from the pocket a lot of the times. I personally did not see that from him. I didn't see what I saw from Penix. I didn't even see what I saw from Bo Nix. That is something that is very concerning for me because we are in, in, in a conundrum here. We need a quarterback. 
you you would want to draft a guy who was highly thought of by people. But I don't think that Drake May is is a guy that you can just hand the team over to on in day one. I think he's a guy that got to sit for a little bit. So you got to put him in the best situation to be successful. Now, not a, a lot of y'all might disagree with me. You might. You might. But I'm, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you guys. I think Drake May is a guy that's a year off of being successful, man. Salute, Nation. So, salute to Robert Hicks. Let me get to some of these comments in him. I got more money. If the Raiders don't get who they want without costing them anything, I'm good with AOC for a full year. No excuses after the full year if he doesn't do well. And and, and I, I think that is a... a an, an adult way to look at things. I think that that is a smart way to look at things. I think that that's the only way you can judge this because look, it, it's dollar cost average, right? You don't want to handcuff yourself to a quarterback that you weren't in love with as, as an organization, because essentially when you take a quarterback in the first round, you've just X'd out the next two to three years of, of, of your organization in, into development of that quarterback. See, the reason why, People don't let first round picks compete. It's either they draft them and sit them right off the bat. And they say, nope, he's not playing. Or they start him immediately. Is because when you bring, when you bring in a guy, you have to have the full weight of the organization behind that kid. So that means that all of that, yo, he can split first team reps with Aiden and and with, with Gardner Minshew. That shit goes out the window if you draft a kid in the first round. He's the guy day one, unless they, they, they're they able to sit him. There are some teams that can sit a quarterback because they're not as bad as you think. There are some teams that have an incumbent quarterback that's in the last year of his deal, and he's willing to, to kind of you know mentor the kid and, and step aside. That's a different situation, but we don't see that scenario a lot in the NFL anymore. Now what you have is you have a guy that comes in day one, has to take all the first team reps. You have to build the roster to acquiesce his skill set. You have to put him in a situation from a play calling perspective that is most beneficial to his skill set. Everything has to be tailored to the betterment and development of that particular quarterback. And the problem is when you have a guy like an Aiden O'Connell, he is such a um, he is such a like 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 a question mark to where you want to make sure if you make that commitment to this young guy. You're done with that experiment. Now, we are in a good situation where we have a young guy that we can still develop. And he's a guy that you don't have to put the whole world on. He's a guy that you say, hey, listen, man, you got to fight for your job. You and Gardner can battle it out. But if you draft a guy in the first round, the battling it out shit goes out the window. Just know that. Shout out to everybody. Shout out to my guy. Ira Jackson is in a place. Shout out to Ira, man. Ira, thank you for blessing Blessing this channel once again, man. Your, your, your presence on my channel is greatly, greatly appreciated, Ira Jackson. Thank you for gifting five Raider Nation Unlimited memberships, my brother. Thank you. The Wasted Talent Army has grown by droves. And we will be doing a members-only mock draft battle. It's going to be in um, the field of 64. You know, April Madness. That is what we're going to do. It's going to be in spirit. I will be inboxing some of you guys. What we're going to do is we are going to have a mock draft battle each participant that's going to be in this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you guys numbers, brackets. I'm going to pick members that's going to be in my field. You guys go to your mock drafts, send your mock drafts to me. I'm going to post them on all my social medias and on my community tab, and we're going to have polls. We're going to vote on the best mock draft. This is what we shall be doing. Yes, sir. My guy, all right. We don't need a QB. There is no guarantee that any of these guys will be the guy. If the QB falls to them that they are high on, then okay. Otherwise, fill in other positions with top rated right guys. Now, see, I, bro, I, I believe that you already know what Gardner Minshew is, if I'm being honest. You have a good idea of what Aiden O'Connell is. He he's a um he is a high floor, low ceiling guy, from what I can see. He is a high floor, low ceiling guy. So his ceiling isn't high enough for you to get into that rarefied air to compete with Patrick Mahomes. 
every team in this league is seeking that. So for you to say that we don't need, yeah, we do. We need it like your life depended on it. I'm going to be honest with you. There's a lot of things that we can live with, but we still need. I can live off of what I make, right? But I need more, right? That that's that is how you have to look at this, bro. So I don't agree with that. But what I will say, can we get by? Can we survive one season with the stopgap approach at quarterback? Yes. Do I want to? And with all this excitement, I want to I want to take this excitement and I want to take this feeling in this in that locker room and I want to capitalize on it. I want to build on it. I I I, I want to I that's what I want. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like, yo, if a quarterback that you believe can take you into the next decade is in striking distance. You have to do everything you can to get said quarterback. You have to do everything you can. Sorry. We got almost 700 in the room. Get wasted with your brother. Wasted, man. Tell a friend and tell a friend. Well, we got another super up in here, man. My guy, Omar with the $2 holler. Bro talks about next year. F that. Next year's QB suck. Now, I don't agree with that. There are some good quarterbacks coming out next year. One, Shador Sanders. But, it, listen, don't be a prisoner of the moment, Omar. Do the work. Do the work. There are some very good young quarterbacks coming out. You got a kid at USC who I don't think he's coming out next year, but he might be just as good as Caleb Williams or better. That's replacing him. It's a lot. There's a lot going on in college football, my brother. Don't, don't speak too soon. My guy Omar again with the $5 house. May had no help compared to every other QB in the draft. Also, May is the only QB we haven't looked at. That can mean just the Q, QB because of the lack of interest. Now, see, bro, just the thing. I've looked at Drake May. Now, I when I see Drake May, yes, you talk about help, right? But Drake May is a, in a situation where, yo, there were times where like, I saw Michael Penix Jr. get the snot beat out of him, right? And he, he kept making throws. And it's not just about when things are going well, right? It's when things are going bad. Like, how does he play? Does does he start taking, trying to take the game over? Or does he try to, like, move and take off and run like Jaden Daniels? Does he try to make things happen? Or does he let the game try to come to him too much? From what I've seen from Drake May, he lets the game come to him too much. And it's times where they're getting the stuffing beat out of them. He's not stepping up and taking off and running with all that athleticism. He's not, you know, trying. You know, I would rather you like how Caleb Williams did this year. Caleb Williams didn't have the year he had the previous year because they didn't have the line. And there was a lot. He lost a lot of players and he had a tough year this year. But you know what? Caleb Williams was trying to make plays. He was trying to win. And if you throw an interception trying to win, Yo, and you're battling out there, I don't got no problem with it, especially when you don't have anything there to help you. You know, there's some there there's some errant, stupid interceptions. There are times where you get guys that, you know, throw the ball away when they shouldn't, like Carr used to do on like third and 15, and we're like late in the fourth quarter, and then, you know, all of this shit, you're down. Times like that, I want to see my quarterback taking off for the first down. I want to see my quarterback trying to fit it in there. That's what I want to see in times like that. My guy, Raider Pete, is in a place, man. Thank you for the – Raider Pace is in, is in a place, man. Thank you for the $10 holler, man. Yo, Telesco thinks Penix is the Herbert of this draft. I'm good with getting him at 13. Watch dudes film at Washington and Indiana. It's been real nice for a good minute and had Indy ranked in the top 15. Now, look, I, I did not want to derail this show talking about Michael Penix Jr., I did not want to do that. But what I will say is, is this. Michael Penix Jr. is the best back shoulder thrower at all three levels out of anybody in the draft. He 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 drops that shit in a bucket. It's, it's a special talent that he got that I don't see from a lot of these guys. Right. Michael Penix Jr. also is a guy that you have to consider at this point essentially healthy he, you know he had the clavicle injury at indiana he had the acl that was two years ago right so you 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 know and it seems like he's getting a clean bill of health now 
We're going to go into this prospect ranking because one of the scouts have Michael Pinnish Jr. ranked like as the 89th best prospect, which is insane to me. He has Drake May and Caleb. He has Drake May ranked higher. And Caleb, th- these guys rank so high. It's crazy. But I'm, 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 we're going to pull that up a little later. But, you know, at this point, man, look, man, I think a lot of times everybody wants the perfect quarterback. Everybody wants the perfect prospect. There are very few Matthew Staffords where, you know, he was the, 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 the undisputed number one guy. There are very few Trevor Lawrence's, right? Trevor Lawrence was a guy that, you know, everybody was saying his generation was very few Andrew Lux, very few John Elwes. A lot of times there are things that you're going to love about one quarterback and there's things you're not going to like about another one. I, you know, I remember when Aaron Rodgers fell in the draft and people was talking about his attitude and all this and that, right? And people talk themselves out of drafting the best quarterback in that draft and they drafted Alex Smith number one. A guy that did not have the arm that Aaron Rodgers had because he was a good guy. He was a leader. Bro, don't don't confuse yourself, bro. Don't don't let your eye you you your eyes are telling you who who we should be taking. Your eyes are telling you that. Shout out to everybody in the chat, man. John B, Bo Nix the future. You said it first. Listen, I'm cool with getting Bo Nix if you don't take him at 13. If you could go and go get Bo Nix late in the first round or in the second round, cool with it, 100%. Because that means that that 13th pick, you've addressed a positional need. And if you take him lower, then that means that the team is in handcuffed to him in a way where they wouldn't be reticent to draft another quarterback. Bo Nix would essentially be Sam Howe for us. He would be essentially be Sam Howe. So if he flourishes under that concept, great. But if not, you move on. Like Washington did with Sam Howe. They knew Sam Howe. I heard some some rumblings that Sam Howe, you know, when they would talk about drafting Drake May, because, you know, Sam Howe and Drake May got a relationship and stuff, that they had to get rid of Sam Howe because they know they're drafting a the quarterback, and they say he's such a dog that he's not willing to, to play the mentor because he's a young guy himself. He's an alpha. He's not willing to do that. That's why they sent him to Seattle. And in Seattle, he has a situation now where he can go there and compete with Geno Smith. Right? See, that that's the thing that I love about these old GMs that are old, that are old scouts like Snyder. John Snyder had a high grade on, on, on that kid. He had, a, he had a high grade on him, on Sam Howe. He did. And that's why he went and he got him. He did the same thing with Drew Locke. He did the same thing with Drew Locke. See, him and Howie Roseman, you got to be careful. These guys are sneaky. These are guys that they wanted to take in a previous draft, and they see they're available, and they pounce on it. Wasted is in a very mature view of our roster. Go best player available at 13 and 44. For Aiden at QB. I remember... There was Brady comps when we draft AOC. Now, bro, th- listen, the Brady comps are, yo, <laughs> comps to the guy that Brady was when he came out of college, right? So that wasn't a guy that was going to light the world on fire. Does Aiden O'Connell have Brady's, menta- Brady's mentality? I don't, I don't know about that. Look, the kiss of death in the NBA it's being compared to Michael Jordan. That's the kiss of death. Once they compare you to Michael Jordan, right off the bat, essentially that means that your career is never going to be what it's supposed to be, right? The only guy who has been a real apt comp for Michael Jordan was Kobe Bryant. And I was one of the first guys that used to be like, yo, he plays just like Michael Jordan. I was like, no, nah, no, he don't. No, he don't. I'm like, yes, he fucking does. He plays just like Jordan. And as his career went on, then people start seeing the comparisons, right? But that that Kobe didn't have the weight of the comparison to Michael Jordan when he came into the league, like Kendall Gill did, like Harold Miner did, like a lot of guys did. The, the, that's the kiss of death. And comparing somebody to, to Tom to Tom Brady, man, that that's the kiss of death, bro. It really is. Everybody always wants to compare a lower drafted guy who was kind of limited athletically to Brady and Joe Montana. And these are the two greatest quarterbacks to ever play the game. You know, so I. I like to pump the brakes on the, the Brady comparisons. His throwing motion similar to Brady, 
kind of the same size. But the one thing I haven't seen out of Aiden O'Connell is can he work like Brady? Because I'm looking at Aiden O'Connell. I saw him at that gala with, a, with, with, with AP. He still doesn't look like, you know, he's made any strides on his physique. That's that's the, the thing about Aiden. I wanted to see this offseason. Can he lose about like, you know, 10, 15 pounds? Is he going to come into camp looking at like a dip? I hope he does. I hope I'm wrong. It's kind of early, right? But when he comes to camp, I want to see Aiden O'Connell. I want to see the work he put in in the gym. I want to see it. When, when, when he comes to camp, I want, I want to see him looking like a different guy. That'll show me everything I need to know about Aiden O'Connell. Raiders C. Sure, Jaden can win you some close games, but I don't think he will take us to the promised land. The way you win is you build through the draft. Now, bro, look. Locating the quarterback is building through the draft one-on-one. Winning with a quarterback on a rookie deal is building the rock. Like, why do you guys act like the rest of the roster, like the, the quarterback is a position that's here and the rest of the roster is something else different? Locating the quarterback is huge. That's a huge part of building through the draft. You can, if you locate your quarterback and you fucking whiff on the next three or four picks, nobody's even going to remember because that's how important it is to, to locate the quarterback. That is how important it is. Remember when they said, all D car needs the defense. Now all we need is an offense. And in truth, like that's the thing. We have an offense. We just need an offensive line. Offensive line need a, a trigger man. I look, I'm telling you, bro, you can win with some pedestrian quarterbacks if the roster is nice enough, right? But if you think you're gonna get to the promised land, but we're trying to go, you gotta have a guy that can stand in there and that you can that can make plays when need be. You need a guy that can stand in the pocket and deliver that football in the fourth quarter when need be. Let me get down here, man. G code. We have two backup quarterbacks. So we being real, yo. <laughs> Damn, bro. So let me get that. Yo, Walt is in a place to be. Walt is still on the clock for my draft from the last. Installment of the Graph and Wasted show. Walt is still on the clock. Walt, what the F is going on, Walt? Old man Walt is in a place to be, man. My God, JVW. Bro, watch every game that Drake may play. I respect your opinion, but the thing you said about him is wrong. This guy had no line, mediocre receivers that dropped passes, and a new offensive coordinator. Now listen, bro, I'm not saying that's not the case. I never said that. And I appreciate your respect for my opinion. But what I'm saying is, is that, yo, there's a lot of times where I personally, it's just me. I don't feel like, I don't feel like, I, I feel like he kind of let certain things kind of happen. I don't feel like he, he he took things by the balls, by, by, by you know, so to speak. Pause if necessary. But I, I don't think that Drake may, I, like, I don't see what I see from these other guys. I'm, I'm if I'm being honest, I, I think he's a guy that needs to cook a little bit more. And I don't think that Drake may is playing against the best of the best. Like some of these guys are too. He's in the ACC. Now the ACC, you got Clemson, but Clemson is falling off. Florida state had a very good roster this year, but some of these other teams in the ACC aren't, aren't, aren't great. You know what I'm saying? So I, I disagree, man. I did. We, we got to agree to disagree on that. I'm not a big Drake may guy, man. That's me. I, do I think he can be good at the next level? Yeah, I think he has to go to the right situation. Though. I think, like, more so than a lot of these guys, I think some of these guys are transformational guys. I think Jaden Daniels is a transformational talent. I don't think Jaden Daniels – I think there's a multitude of teams where Jaden Daniels can go to and he can elevate that roster very, very quickly, right? I think Kayla Williams is the, also that kind of talent. He can elevate your roster no matter where he goes. If you give him a couple of weapons, he'll be fine with Drake May – think Drake May needs everything tailor-made around him. You need everybody on board with a clear and concise vision of how to get him to the next level and, and with his development. And, and I also think that with Drake May, you have to have 
the right quarterback coach. You definitely do. You got to have somebody to help him see the game in a different way and give him the latitude to take off and be that swashbuckling quarterback that we need, man. JM, every QB will be a crap you because you'll never be able to measure the most important trait a QB needs, which is processing information and making the right throw and NFL reason. That is a fact, man. God damn, yo. My guy, Hug D's, man. Shout out to Hug D's with the $5 holler. We've watched McKenzie, an ESPN analyst, the overpower McDummy draft. We haven't seen a tenured GM rock with the position in 10 plus years. Just breathe, y'all. And you hug these. That is a haymaker, bro. Hey, that might be, that might be the freaking best comment of the day. Shout out to hug these. What? Oh, hug these with the haymaker as usual. Shout out to my guy, hug man. That is an effing fact, man. That's an effing fact. Yo, we had Mike. We had. Reggie McKenzie, you know, the, the guy who had the propensity for drafting injured players. We had Mike Mayock, TV's favorite GM. And we got Mick Ziegler, who did some good things, but he had McDummy on the trigger. So, yeah, man, this is the first time, brother. With Penix, although he could be that Superman, when the game is on the line, he will get us to a tie game or even win a game and i think for me talent wins out for me talent wins out that's my personal opinion my guy danny kim yo what is the deal yo outside of williams and daniels who do you think is the best game between the ears as it comes to process and anticipation. That's our guy at 13. Daniel Kim, I've said it from day one. I think Penix, Michael Penix, is the best at processing out of all of these guys. Bar none. Penix Jr. Now, he definitely lost weight. His face was fatter during the season. No Diddy. Classic Q, it's all Diddy with you. All love, all Diddy for you, bro. You tweaking. Yo, my guy J. Rowe with the $5 holler. Are we really going to this season with rookies or one-year starters on the right side of our O-line? That scares me. Wait, so J. Rowe, it scares me too, right? And now there are a lot of um there are there are a lot of breadcrumbs to Dalton Reisner, right? Now, Dalton Reisner is a guy that, you know, he has been a serviceable starter. He's getting up there, but they're saying that the Raiders may take a flyer on him. I would like to see that. I think the Raiders need another we, – we, we, we need another vet on that line. Now, Dahl Rosner has played tremendous for the Minnesota Vikings, man. You know, he he, he has been a, a hell of a serviceable guard in his times, man. You know, th this guy in his professional career, man, hasn't missed many games, man. You know, he he's, he's played 77 games. He started 73, man. The Kansas State guard drafted in 2019, the second round, man, has been, has, has been, you know, a hell of a guard, man. A hell of a guard. Drafted by the Denver Broncos, played one year for the Minnesota Vikings, and now he's on the, the free agent market. He's a young, he's a younger guy, too. He's a young guy, man. He's only 28 years old. He is a guy that you can sign. And if he works out for you, he can be your starter for the foreseeable future without having to use draft capital. I am all for the Raiders bringing in in Dalton what all the rise man and then now you have a guy who's a vet now the way I see it J Rowe is if the Raiders do get a quarterback and they have young guys I would prefer to see them move Dylan Parham to the right guard position and then put the young pup in between Andre James and Colton Miller so now you have vet rookie vet vet rookie You know, that's how I would love to see it happen. Yo, shout out to my guy, Jay Rowe. Thank you, bro. My guy, Reezy. Locker room narratives was all BS for the fans that put Dr. Phil in the NFL. Shaq and Kobe, Tom versus Bill, Jones versus Johnson, all one. Phil, the play is the only thing that matters. That's not necessarily true, Reezy. Chemistry matters, bro. 
Chemistry is the reason why the Raiders went from being a dumpster fire to being one of the most exciting teams in the National Football League in the same exact season. Chemistry, brother. Approach. People believing, buying in. We're, we're human beings. We're not these avatars who would just walk in and feel shitty every day and not not be not be inspired. Like we all need to be inspired, don't we? My guy slapped us. The problem with trading a half a decade of picks to move up is that if you miss, you're completely shot. It is really worth the risk. Do we know JD5 is truly him? And slapping us. I've been saying this. Listen, don't don't listen to me. I've been saying this the whole time. I've been saying this the whole time. Yo, I am not. Everybody say they don't fuck them picks. Fuck them. No, no, it's not fuck them picks. You can take that approach next year. Oh, yeah, you can take that approach because if you do well this year, you fill this team in, free agency, get everybody signed, then you could take the, yo, man, this, this team is loaded. Go get a quarterback. F it. This year is not the year to do that. My guy, Steam T with the $2 holla. I'm all in on Rattler. I don't know how you can be all in on, on Spencer Rattler, bro. I like Spencer Rattler, but I'd be lying if I told you I was all in on him. I'm not all in on him at all. I like him. I'm not all in on him. My guy, Huncho. FRM 707. I think if we get Jaden, he'll start over Aiden. But if we get a guy like Penix or JJ, do you think? Yes, 100%. They'll start over Aiden O'Connor 100%. If they spin, if they spin a first round pick on a guy, he is starting. Take that to the bank, man. Gatlin Gun is bugging, yo. He said, Wasted, did you watch 227 back in the day? Of course I did. Of course, of course. Do you see his gray hair? Do you see this gray hair yet? Yes, I did. Yes, I did. Of course. Stoney Jackson, the great, the great and powerful Stoney Jackson was on 227. With, with, with the with the Jerry, with the cleanest curl this side of Jermaine Jackson. Stoney Jackson. Jokers thought that Joker was related to Michael Jackson. And he wasn't. He's out there faking. 227. Lester from 227. Somebody in here looked like Lester from 2272. <laughs> My guy, Devin Smith. The sad part is I don't have to guarantee anything because winning is already on the wall. Aiden will not be the starter. Get out of La La Land. I don't know where that's coming from, but I always like to read Devin Smith because he's a fighter. Shout out to Devin Smith. My guy, Anthony Morea. What do you think about Spencer Rattler if we miss out on Michael Penis Jr. Jaden Daniels? I like Spencer Rattler, but I like him a lot later. I like Spencer Rattler the third round down. Think if you take him in the second round, you're doing that because of a necessity. And it's like they're better players at that point. I don't like Spencer Rattler enough to pass on a player that's better than him just because he's a quarterback. It's personally how I feel, man. Some of y'all are not taking fit into account. Penis Jr. is the best fit at QB for this roster that wants to run play action and take deep shots and run the football and play good defense. Yo, yes, yes, bro. People don't – listen, bro. Look, the one knock on Michael Penis Jr., and I don't want to – guys, we've been talking the last five lives. I, I, I've – you know, I, I, I'm almost sick to my stomach, you know, waving the flag for the Michael Penis Jr. situation. But, bro, he's the best processor, elite – back shoulder thrower, e elite pocket. He gets it done from the pocket. That's what you need when you got two veteran star wide receivers. That's what you need when you have a young up and coming stud at tight end. That is what you need with a Trey Tucker who could take the top off of the defense in a real way. This is what you need. This is what you need. You don't need a guy who's trying to figure it out from the pocket. You want a guy that comes right in and hits the ground running, boom, throwing dimes, BBs, bing, 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 bing. That's what you need. This is what you need. Wasted, can you elaborate on Rattler being a legit option? Someone will trade up for Penix. No way he drops. He's a plug-and-play QB, and someone will pull the trigger. Listen, I, I, I like Spencer Rattler, right? But Spencer Rattler is far as wasted talent, right? Me as a talent evaluator, right? I like my quarterbacks over 6'2". Spencer Rattler is not that. 
right? Spencer Rattler is a guy who, you know, in his high school career, people compared him to the best quarterback in his league. He's a guy who's been at two programs. That's kind of been the um the 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 new the new thing with a lot of these quarterbacks. Even Caleb Williams was 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 at, you know, another school. All of these guys are on their second school. Michael Penix Jr., um, Jaden Daniels, um, Bo Nix, all these guys, right? So that's no knock on Spencer Rattler, right? But Spencer Rattler was a guy who has matured a lot. Now, as a person, from what I'm hearing about Spencer Rattler, he has matured in a way that he's impressed people. He has, he can make all the throws. Very, very athletic kid, man. Um, coming out of high school, man, he was the presumable number one pick. The number one pick. But he's but the thing is, he's six foot, he's 211 pounds, runs a a a, a, a four eight, four nine. And I'm sorry, guys got an eyelash in my eye. But um that's you know, he has elite throwing ability but he's a little small for me man and i don't really like the way he processes i like to me i think a third round grade is fair for spencer rattler i think anything over that you're kind of reaching a bit he but he has a legit pro arm man he's nimble he's fluid he can move a uh, pretty good touch decent ball placement from what i can understand uh when he's under pressure you know what i'm saying he he could throw dimes but he's very very erratic as well uh, he has experience in multiple offensive schemes. He played in the air raid and all that stuff. So he's a guy that can learn different systems. And he took a lot of snaps. He played like 48 games in college. So he's no, he's no, he's a guy who's been under center, man. He, he's a guy who's been under center, man. You know, and, and you know, the good thing about Spencer Rattler is he's unafraid to take a big shot down the field, man. And he went from being one of the top prospects to losing his job and then he transferred. And that's something that, has always been an alarming thing. He like he lost his job, right? But his footwork needs to be addressed big time. And that's the big thing. And I think that's what leads to him being very inconsistent with throwing the football. He's one of them guys where he can get on a roll. He can look like the best quarterback smoking. And then other times he can look horrible. And I think what Spencer Rattler equates to be is he'd be in that that Derek Carr kind of fame where he can he can go off one season. But you're gonna have ebbs and flows if you don't develop Spencer Rattler properly, man. And and him lacking that prototypical size is an issue for me. Him lacking that prototypical size is an issue for me, man. It's an issue. Size does matter at quarterback, unless you are a supreme athlete like Kyler Murray, supreme man. And then the thing about him too is is that he he hasn't developed the nuance. As far as being a quarterback, looking guys off, stuff like that. He hasn't developed that part of his game yet. So I have a third round grade on Spencer Rattler, bro. The good stuff. People are putting their hopes and dreams in the guy that got shot against the Vikes and went a full game and didn't complete a pass after the first quarter. Good stuff. Don't, hey. How can I argue with that, brother? I can't argue with that. Cannot argue with that. My guy, Joe Capitan Ramos. If the Raiders really trade up and grab JD5, it will probably be the most ambitious move in franchise history. Yes, but Joe, let me tell you something. For you to move up and grab a quarterback, you got to have the team that's up there to play ball with you, brother. I'm trying to tell y'all something. The Washington Commanders, Redskins, Deadskins, Foreskins, whatever the hell they calling themselves now, the Skins are drafting Jaden Daniels. Make no mistake about that. They are drafting him. There's a reason why they ran Sam Howe out of town. The only way that we were going to get this guy is if, look, Drake May was the guy. It's been thought that Drake May's the guy. Drake May's the guy. Drake, Drake May is not as highly thought of as a lot of pundits will tell you. Everybody just had Williams one, May two. It's not going to happen, bro. Jaden Daniels has, he's got a foothold on that second pick now. Now, now that he's not in that third, because if he drops the three, then maybe you can move up. Then maybe you can move up. Then maybe another team moves up because I heard the Vikings love freaking J.J. McCarthy. They love him. They want him. 
the, the Giants might move. You never know. So then now serendipity happens. Now you have a whole lot of things that maybe you can wind up with your guy. Jaden Daniels will be a Redskin. Sean Huggins, again, if J.D. falls to the fifth pick, we don't move up. We're going to regret. Bro, he's not. Listen to me. Remember I said it. If he does, I'll stand corrected. I'll be happy if I'm wrong about this. That man is not falling to the fifth pick, bro. It is not going to happen. When you watch Jaden Daniels, bro, and you watch Caleb Williams, you are watching two supreme athletes. You're watching two guys that that yo, bro, they don't. Jaden Daniels, the kind of athlete he is, he is not. Listen, the, the guys like that don't don't just fall. They don't grow on trees, bro. They don't grow on trees, man. My God, Ira Jackson, gifting five Raider Nation Unlimited memberships again. Shout out to Ira Jackson for keeping the lights on at Raider Nation Unlimited, man. Shout out to my guy, man. Thank you so much for doing that, my brother. Thank you for that, my brother. I just want to congrats for Cody finishing the story last night. Man, get that F out of here with that Russell Mania. Hey, you know, man, that junk, man, F and Cody, Cody Rhodes. Couldn't tie his old man's shoes. The American dream. Wasted. There's so much conjecturizing going on. That's not even a word, but cool. On that, it's difficult to tell where we actually stand, how close we are competing for the AFC West. Bro, just go off of the roster that was here last year. Not a whole lot has changed, bro. Not a whole lot has changed, bro. And you're going to see how much you can compete based off of who you got on the center or the leaps and bounds that Aiden O'Connell made or Gardner Minshew. But, yo, if, if I'm being honest, we are not one player away. We're not just a quarterback away from – thrown in the world champions we are like five players away we're a corner away we're a right tackle a guard you know what i'm saying another linebacker a, a, a slam dunk running back along with zamir white we're like five players away guys we're like five players away man my god cowtown what do you what do you say to the GMs that have rather not getting out of the first two rounds? I say good luck to them. For me, I don't, you know, and, and listen, you gotta understand the quarterback market is is a strange and it's a very volatile market because there's a monkey see, monkey do kind of thing. You have some teams that do not reach no matter what. You have other teams who reach based off of the fact that the value of a quarterback is so high that they might take that guy and don't even need the fucking guy. They just take him because it's a quarterback and they just want to, they want to have him on their roster and that's it. And, and maybe they might move him. Maybe they feel like they can develop him, right? So the quarterback market is volatile because the problem with, with, with some of these guys, right? Is, is, is whether you think, that the guy that you have in your locker room is not as good as that guy, right? And he's right there. You weren't even thinking about taking him. Like, I'm gonna give you an example. The New York Giants are very, very um they're 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 a they're a, a good case, right? Daniel Jones is a guy that they drafted, they paid him a lot of money, and now they're in they're 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 in an impasse with him. They don't know if they're if they're gonna if they can develop him. They don't know how good he is. He hasn't really been the healthiest guy in the world, right? The Giants are a team that is a weird team, right? The Atlanta Falcons is another one. They just brought in a free agent quarterback that they love. They paid him a lot of money, right? But they do need a backup. They need a young guy they can develop because Kirk Cousins is not the 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 youngest guy in the world. So you might have a guy have him sit for a year or two. Right. There's a lot of teams that are very, very intriguing. So that's the reason why I say the court is hard to say the, 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 the day of the draft that dictates whether or not the second round or the third round or whatever that that's what dictates everything. It dictates everything, because if you have a run on quarterbacks in the first round and you're a team where you're like, yo, we need to get one out of this draft and 
yo, Spencer Rattler is the only guy that we feel that's still left that's draftable. They might move up and overswing on a guy. And it wouldn't surprise me at all if he went in the second round. It wouldn't, su- but do I think he should? No. I mean, that's me, man. Wasted. Say we miss on Penix and we draft a tackle and um, a OS and Bo Nix is available in the second round. Would you take Cooper over Nix? No, I, I would take Nix in the second. See, Nix in the second round is, is great for me because now I'm not married to him. I'm not married to him. Yeah, we have a young quarterback. We're trying to develop him. But say, for instance, next year we're bad. Well, we have a chance to move up to get a generational guy, and we're in play for that. Bo Nix is not going to be the guy being a second round pick that you're going to avoid taking that guy. He'd be the new Sam Howe. The Redskins could have said, Oh, we got a young quarterback of Sam Howe. You know, we're still trying to see. No, they said, No, we like Sam Howe. He's good, but he ain't good enough. We're going to get our guy. And that's what they did. And I like that. There we go, man. My guy, Ira Jackson. More Raider Nation Unlimited membership. I, you guys, I, I keep seeing this stuff. 20 more. Ira Jackson, the epic man, keeping the lights on him, man. Unbelievable. Thank you, Ira Jackson, man. This man is going membership crazy over here. Shout out to Ira Jackson, man. The GOAT, man. Appreciate you, my brother. Thank you. My guy, Ridgeback, is in a place. Salute, wasted. If the ABs are gone by 13, this will still probably be a phenomenal draft, getting high-graded talent in the first five rounds. OT, O-guard, o- uh, corner, linebacker, running back. And that, and that is, bro, and that is the, the key to it all. And, guys, listen, everybody that's in the place, man, TL Tibbs, Ira Jackson, thank you for the membership. Guys, please, everybody spam. Thank you, Ira, who got a membership in the chat. Spam the great and powerful Ira Jackson. For, for for blessing you guys with memberships. Sp- thank this this great man who was keeping the lights on here, man. Oh, my dog, Dark Raider Prime is in here. Hold up, Prime. I ain't see so I know you goddamn lying to me. With the five dollar holler. Whoever we draft, I just hope they don't they don't soften up like J. Cole. No diddy. Oh. See, I wanted to talk about this. We go, we gonna transition from football really quick. Shout out to my brother Darth Raider Prime for blessing me with the five dollar dollar, man. Thank you, Darth. My bad. I know you goddamn lying to me. <laughs> That's my dog. Yo, look, I'm gonna be honest with y'all. I think Cole is a talented rapper, bro. But just for the sport of this, right? If you start it, because you've been taking shots, don't, 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 don't. The boogeyman is here now. I, I've been telling everybody for years, bro. Kendrick Lamar is the boogeyman. Don't none of these young rappers. See, look, man, there's a difference between today's rappers and yesteryear's rappers. I think Kendrick Lamar could take his microphone and put it next to the very best who's ever done this. The rest of these guys can't. Everybody talk about Drake and how many hits he writes. Drake got a team full of writers, bro. I, to me, you, you that, that that's a rap. Then he starts shit with people and then he try to play victim. I'm still waiting for him to have a good response to Pusha T. It was Pusha T clinked him up. Look, Kendrick Lamar is different. And if you're going to bark up that tree, you better go nuclear on him. Yeah, he curred out, man. Shout out to Ira Jackson again. 20 more memberships. Golly, yo, y'all bet, yo, spam. Thank you, Ira Jackson, man. K Dot is over, right? You tweaking, man. You tweaking, man. Ira Jackson, that's my dog, man. Appreciate you, brother. Appreciate you. But yeah, man, look, man, I, I don't want to hear that, man. Listen, Kendrick is the only guy in this era. I know there's a Raider channel. We're going to talk a little hip-hop right now. You know I tend to do that from time to time. 
He the only guy from this era that has a body of work and he puts together real albums that are cohesive. He puts together works of art. I love Kendrick Lamar. You know what I'm saying? As, as an old school hip hop guy that wants to put an album on and, and, and have no skips. He's the only guy from this generation pre Lil Wayne, right? I mean, I mean, post Lil Wayne and stuff who's had classic albums. None of these guys have had classic albums, yo. Good Kid, Mad City was a classic. Can't take that away from him, man. And I liked his last album. It's no mumble rap, none of that. He's actually talking about something. He actually talking about something. See, a lot of people that say Kendrick is overrated, that's because you're not, that's not what you want to hear. And that's cool. To me, he's not. To me, that, that brother's talking about something, something that is vital. Like he's bringing something to hip-hop that hip-hop is missing, balance, a social consciousness. We need that. It can't always be guns and dancing and popping and doing this. It has to have some meaning, yo. When you take the meaning out of the music, you see what hip-hop is devolved into now. Look at what it's devolved into. Look at it. You, you get a chick who can't rap, you take off a stripper pole, get her a fucking beat. Get, get her a ghostwriter. You got hit records now. Look at what's happened to the game that I used to love, man. You need Kendrick Lamar's, man. You need that. You need that, bro. I'm sorry. You need that. Yo, the machine. La, La, La Machina is my guy, too. I love Conway. Conway spit that shit. But at the end of the day, I don't need to hear how, how, big, of a, how big, big he was in the street. And you don't talk about nothing. And I love Benny. I, I love I love Butch. I, yo, I, I love, you know what I'm saying, Conway. Westside Gun puts together better albums than them, but I can't stand his voice. But all they talk about is shooting motherfuckers and how hard they are. And these dudes, Benny the Butcher and all of these dudes is like a couple years younger than me. They old as shit. They old as hell, but I don't want to hear all, like, yo, like, yeah, there's no balance in the shit that they talk about. There's no balance. It's just all street shit. And yo, that has its place. But when you start making studio albums, you you have to be able to bring it somewhere else. Like yo, the greats bring it somewhere else. The Nas's, the Jays, the Tupacs, the Biggies, they talk about something else, man. And, that, and that's the thing, man. You got to talk about something else. But let's get back to football, man. And I don't, I and and yo, you you're tripping, bro. Rochelle is not one thousand times better than K Dot, bro. Not at all. And I and I love Conway, right? It's not a thousand times better than Kendrick. The the way, look, I'm gonna be honest with you. The way J Cole went on Benny Joint and just effed on him like that, I don't want to hear that shit because it's different guys. So when they get on tracks with motherfuckers who rap rap, it's, it it get a little spooky. J Cole went on there effed on Benny, bro. I don't want to hear that. Benny with his, you know, with all his, you know, his, his his crack rap and all of that. Yeah, that shit cool. That shit cool. It's cute. But yo, with somebody who could really fucking rap, get on the track with you, it, it look a lot different. Like even that song Big Dog. Yo, look, there's a remix they did to that shit with Lil Wayne. He ate Benny the Butcher's lunch. I ain't leave out Ice Cube. Cube is my dog. I love Ice Cube. But Cube is, that that's an era from the past. I love Ice Cube was one of my favorite rappers when I was guy. I love Ice Cube. Love Ice Cube. Scarface. The great Brad Jordan. Scarface. Jada Kiss. Yes. Yo, y'all said name my top five. Uh, Nas, uh, Nas, Jay Z, Tupac, Scarface, Nas, Jay Z, Scarface. Hmm. Nas, Jay, Scarface, Pac. Biggie was always in my top five because I love Big, but Big, Big don't have enough material, bro. Big don't have a big don't have enough material, bro. I love DMX too. You know what I'm saying? Um, that fifth spot is, is 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 rough for me because Big was always in my top five because of how nice Biggie was. 
but but Biggie only got two albums. And as time has moved on, you got to put somebody else in there, right? You know, some guys like Jada Kiss, you know what I'm saying? Where Jada Kiss doesn't have that that solo career, but Kiss is just so fucking nice. It's hard for me not to put Kiss in there. I can't put Kanye in there, even though I like a lot of Kanye albums because Kanye can't rap like them. You know what I'm saying? So it's rough for me, man. You know what I mean? Snoop used to be a guy that you could put it. You can't put Snoop in there no more. I can't. I don't like enough of Eminem stuff to put him in my top five. I don't. You know what I'm saying? Eminem's a great rapper, but I don't like his music. You know what I'm saying? So, not Pop Smoke. Come on, man. Get the F out of here, yo. You know what I'm saying? I mean, and I'm not, I'm not, you know what I'm saying? Look, you could put Big Daddy Kane was my guy and the kid, kid, fucking Ice Cube was my guy when I was a kid. Right? LL. LL is a guy you got to put your, LL's the, the, the 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 rock of Gibraltar that 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 five spot I gotta think of it. I'll give you my four big not I'm I'm taking big out it was always big you know what man I can't even do that to bi fuck that Nas J Tupac Scarface Big Biggie Smalls fuck it Biggie Smalls man and I'm not putting I'm Eminem's not in my top ten I don't fuck with Eminem like that that's me you know what I'm saying that's me. But yeah, Brad Jordan is definitely in my five. It, JD Kiss in my top 10, definitely. He said Joe Button for the weird shit, yo. Graham Cam. All right, so let me get back into this, yo. Wasted in the Nation. Who's the best rapper in the Wu Tang Clan? Yo. Un I'm going to tell y'all, you know the best rapper in the Wu-Tang Clan is Inspector Deck. Inspector Deck, 100. Ins Deck is the nicest in the Wu. Deck and then Raekwon second. But yeah, nah, Inspector Deck is the nicest one out of all. I don't give a fuck what nobody say. Inspector Deck is nice, bro. Nah, Inspector Deck, bro. Yo, P, I love P. Prodigy is one of my favorites, but P, I can't put P. P didn't have enough solo shit for me to put P in that 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 air. Ghost be talking about some straight bullshit sometimes, man. I'm not putting Ghost in there, bro. I'm gonna tell y'all somebody who's in my personal top ten that y'all not going to agree with. Beanie Siegel, Beans, yes sir. Dmx is in my top. Dmx is in my top ten too, man. I'm not sleeping on Cam. Cam just not at my top. Cam not at my top 10. I fuck with Cam like that. I fuck with Killer, bro. But he, nah, bro. Man, come, uh, bro. Are you serious, bro? Listen, bro. Let me tell y'all something, yo. Black Thought is my, Black Thought is in my top 10, bro. I love Black Thought. I love Black Thought. Don't, don't this, nah, hell no. Black Thought, I love Tariq Trotter, man. You crazy, man? Black Thought is my guy, man. Nah, bro. Yeah, j Row. trust me. Black Thought, people don't want to get on the track with Black, but Black Thought don't have any solo albums, bro. Karis One is one of my favorites too, bro. But you know, that's, you know. But yo, let, let's, let's get back. We talk about hip-hop. Listen, guys, I've been going at it almost an hour and a half. Y'all want to talk about football or hip-hop? Y'all let me know. Hey, you tripping. Karis One is a legend. Wash your mouth out with soap. Big pun, legend, short, legend. Master P, I remember bumping the ice cream man back in 97. But y'all know about it, yo. <laughs> Wait, hold on. Yo, AKG, hey, LOL, guys, you got to make a separate podcast with Gravity. Yeah, we do. It's called Built Different. We just haven't done it all off season, bro. We fucking up. My guy, the Cali Enigma. Shout out to you for the $5 holler. No disrespect to Eminem, but I can't relate to his music. He's not from my culture. He's nice, though. 90s hip-hop is still a top ever. Nas is my GOAT. Shout out to the Cali and Nick. I, I fuck with that. Yeah, I don't I, like. I don't relate to Eminem. I, Eminem is nice and everything. I'm, I would never take his talent from him. I don't fuck with his albums. The only album I like of Eminem's is his second album with, with, with you know, his most famous album, Stan and all of that. 
And but after a while, that shit gets annoying to me. I don't want to hear all that. Blah, 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 blah. And, and Red Man, listen, Red Man from the Crips. You know I love Red Man, man. Most Def is definitely one of my tops. Love Most Def. Fuck you, my guy. Six month membership. My guy, man. Appreciate that. Appreciate you, bro, for being a member for six months, bro. But guys, look, man. It's time to get on off it, man. We've been going for an hour and 20 minutes, man. It's time for me to go sit down with the family. We've talked about football. We talked about Dalton Reisner. We talked about Jaden Daniels. We talked about Michael Penix Jr. We talked about Jack Jones and his feelings towards the organization. What we're going to start doing is Lord finesse. Rap without finesse is like the NBA without Jordan. What you know about that? What you know about Lord finesse for the DITC? So, all right, look. So, you guys want to do a mock? We do a mock draft. We're going to get out of here, yo. We're going to do a mock draft. We're going to get out of here, yo. Members only. Members only, y'all. Members only, y'all. All right, so guys, look, we're going to do the mock draft. We're going to do the whole seven rounds, yo. We're going to do the whole seven rounds, right? Draft fast. All right, now look, y'all. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show y'all my screen. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Present, share screen. Share. All right, boom. So, look. Who's participating in this mock? So, yo, Alex Rebel Rojas. Tisa. Walt, no, Walt is still on the clock from the last draft, y'all. Look, I'm going to take the third pick. Ira Jackson, appreciate you for being up here. Ira, you want to do a mock draft? Draft time, yo. Girth. <laughs> Shout out. <laughs> yo, it's nasty working here, y'all. Draft time. Yo, all right, so look. This is what we're going to do. Alex, you get the first pick. Slap nuts. You get the second pick. Bronx Raider, you get the fourth pick. I'm going to do the third. Classic Man Q. Classic man Q. Yeah, no, so what, no trading? No trading? All right, so look. Boom. Look, Bronze Raider got the fourth, right? So, yo. Alex, take, take your pick, bro. I'm going to show you who's available. Alex Rebel wrote. He said, can I get a QB? Yes, you can. Yo, it's your draft, brother. It is your draft. We're not going to accept this trade. We are going to reject it. Let me go back to the draft, man, because y'all know I'm up here. Let me reject this. Reject. All right, now let's see who's on the board. Alex Rebel Rojas is in the place to be. Offense, he wants to take a quarterback. Michael Penix Jr. is available. Bo Nix is available. Spencer Rattler, Michael Pratt, Jordan Travis, and Joe Milton. Who are you taking? Reb. Yes, you can get a quarterback. Reb, who are you taking? You taking Michael Penix Jr., bro? Alex, you still there? Who are we taking? So we taking Michael Penix? What's up, Alpha Omega? Penix, Penix. Yo, but yo, Alex got to take him, though. Alex. Yes, Penix. So we taking Michael Penix Jr. Shout out to Alex Rebel. Rojas, the man himself, the, the 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 master of the draft. All right, we're going to reject this trade. Reject. All right, now, y'all, best player available on the board in the second round is Bo Nix, Tavondre Sweat, Zach Frazier, Trey Benson, Max Melton, Cooper Beebe's in the place. What are we doing here, y'all? Nah, Joey Chi, I got you, bro. What's up? You want to draft? 
You get a pick too. So we we got Penix, right? We got Penix. So so let me ask you a question. Who got the second pick? BB, Dan Tisa, you got BB. All right, we taking Cooper BB. We're going to take Cooper BB here. Tisa wants to take Cooper BB. It makes sense. We got our guard to protect our quarterback. I have the third pick. I have the third pick. Now we got Ricky Parcell. Um Jeremiah Trotter Jr. I, I think we need to go defense, yo. So let me see. Chris Drain is nice. You know what I'm saying? James Williams. Eichenberg. We're not getting enough value here. Defensive tackle, Chris Jenkins. We've already went. So look, you know what? I'm going to amend this. I'm going to go see if we got any tackles in this draft still available. Kakavez, let me see if we got any corners available. DL James, Cam Hart. I'm going to go Kyrie Jackson. I like Kyrie Jackson. We going Kyrie Jackson, yo. So we got Kyrie Jackson. So yo, who 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 got who got the fourth pick? You know who got the fourth pick? Who got the fourth pick? Forgot who got who I say I had the fourth pick. Q, you ain't got the fourth pick. Get the f out of here. No, you don't. Q, you got the fourth pick. Bronx Raider got the four pick. Bronx Raider. Who you who you who you taking, bro? Yeah, yeah, Bronx got the four pick. Bronx. All right, let's see who you gonna take, Bronx. All right, now we're gonna reject, reject. Now, best player available. Tevin Wallace is available. Josh Newton is available. Audric Estem, running back out of Notre Dame, is available. Um Michael Pratt, Makai Wingo, defensive tackles available. Jalen Wright is available. Brandon Coleman, Ray Davis is available. Brendan Rice, Theo Johnson. What are we doing? We going defense? We going offense? What what we doing here, bro? What are we doing here? Let me get back in the chat. Bronx, what, what, what you doing, bro? Bronx, where you at, homie? The best available. The best available is Tevin Wallace, from what they're saying. Josh Newton, uh, Estemi, Phillips, Makai Wingo. So, Bronx, what you doing, bro? I already I took a corner the last the last pick. Mo Kamara is still available. Jalen Wright is available. Ray, you like Ray Davis? All right, we taking Ray Davis then. Bronx Raiders said we taking Ray Davis. That's what we taking. We taking Ray Davis, man. Ray High Stakes Davis. Kentucky, boom. Hey, Q, Q, you got the fifth pick? No, I've never been to Cowtown. We need a linebacker. Q, you got the fifth pick? We definitely need a linebacker. Q, you, you. Q, hey, hey, classic man, Q, you in a place? Hug these, you got the sixth round. Q, get your player, bro, or I'm going to pick him because we got it. We, yeah, did we get, we got Cooper BB. You want another offensive lineman? All right, Q, let me look and see who's available, bro. Reject. So look, all right, right now, Marshawn Lloyd still available. Theo Johnson, Wiley. Let me offense. Let me see some tackles. Matt Kakavez out of Pittsburgh. Caden Wallace. Frank Crum is still available. Driscoll from Marshall. Caleb Atien from BYU. I like him. Good player. We got some guards available. J 
Javon Cohen is available. Dylan McMahon is available. Right? So uh, linebacker, defense, let's see how many linebackers we got available. Tyke Smith is available still. Jerry and Jones from Florida State, Tyler Davis. Let's go to linebacker. Curtis Jacob, Tommy Eichenberg is still available. Omar Spates is still available. Q, it's on you, brother. Get Caden Wallace. All right, classic man Q just made an executive decision. We're going to get Caden Wallace, yo. Let's find him. Let me see. Where's Caden Wallace at? Wait, where's Caden Wallace at? Let me see something I messed up. Q, where's Caden Wallace at? He's is, is Caden Wallace is a guard, right? Nah, he's a tackle. Caden Wallace is a tackle. I can't find. Oh, he's at Penn State. Big boy at Penn State. I'm bugging, man. My bad, y'all. Best linebacker available. All right, so let me ask y'all a question. So now we need a linebacker, right? Hug these. This one's on you. We get Eichenberg. Yeah, look, I'm gonna I'm gonna finish this up. We're gonna get Tommy Eichenberg, bro. It, we we gotta get him. Is he still available is the question. No, Tommy Eichenberg is gone, y'all. Tommy Eichenberg is gone. Eichenberg is gone, y'all. Eichenberg is gone, y'all. So I'm going to get Omar, y'all. We need a linebacker. We getting Omar, yo. Omar Space off the board. Frank Crum is gone. Okay, now sixth round. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna go and try to try to reach on the edge or or, or safety or something like that. I'm gonna go Jalen Simpson Auburn. Right, then we're going to go edge. We, we're going to beef this defense up, man. Let me see who's the best player available. We need a tight end bad. We need a tight end bad. We got to. All right. So y'all say y'all want to go wide receiver? Let's see. We got a wide receiver left. We don't have a whole lot to work with here. We got some tight end talent here, right? With some defensive talent here. I'm going to go Dominique Hampton out of Washington, man. I like that kid. So that's our draft, y'all. That is our draft, everybody. Full results. That is our draft. How do you guys view this draft? Joe Milton wasn't there, y'all. Joe Milton, all these guys y'all naming, they weren't there, y'all. We didn't get a wide receiver. So, guys, look. We're done with our draft for the day. We're going to be doing mock drafts almost every day. I know y'all like that. We're going to be doing that every day. Up into the draft. I'm going to be breaking some players down before the draft. Guys, this has been a great episode. I appreciate all the support, man. Shout out to everybody in the place to be, man. Shout out to my guy, man, Ira Jackson, man. Appreciate you, man, for supporting the channel. Shout out to Jay Rowe, Honcho, Steam T, uh, Anthony Mareja, Joe Capita, Ramos, man, all of the new members. Classic Man Q, my brother in the place, the Cali Enigma, fuck you. My guys in the place, man. Daniel Kim, Hug D's, 
uh, Raider Pace, Omar, the Mokes, all of y'all, man. I appreciate every single one of y'all. Love y'all. Y'all have a terrific night. We are out like yesterday. I will see y'all tomorrow. We will be back if anything hits. And even if anything doesn't hit, I'm going to be doing some, some, some shorts, breaking out some guys in the draft. Y'all have a terrific night, man. And y'all know what I always say, man. Yesterday's price is not today's price. And thank y'all for pulling up, man. Y'all have a terrific night, man. Peace.